8 into 1.08 to the power 5 plus 1000 into 1 by 1.08 to the power 5. Okay, so that's how you will arrive at the present value of all these cash flows. So let me tell you what it turns out to be 1079.85. So you add it up, either you find it this way or this way, you will see that it turns out to be 1079.85. So this is the fair value of the bond as per your calculation when you are taking the discount rate to be 8%. Now would this be the price of the bond in the market? Well, it depends. If the other buyers and sellers as well are factoring in 8%, then this is the most likely price at which the bond would be quoted in the market. But let's say the market is factoring in a, a, a return of 7%. They are discounting these cash flows at 7%. Well, you are discounting it at 8%. So don't be surprised if the bond price in the market is way above what you've just calculated because the market is discounting all these cash flows at 7%. Uh, uh, I, I keep using the term market and let me just explain you uh, what would it basically translate into. Uh, market is essentially an engagement of buyers and sellers. So when I say market, basically other transactions for the same bond are taking place at a price which indicates a discount rate of 7%. So if there are other buyers who are willing to buy it for a higher price, while you discounted it at 8% and you arrive at a price of 1079.85, you will be easily outbid by the other participants in the market. So the market price is going to be way higher than this. So uh, from the question perspective, you need to understand the difference between the market price and uh, what is the fair value of the bond more often than not the two would converge with each other but if you have reasons to believe that the that the appropriate rate at which you should discount these cash flows is eight percent and not seven percent for you the fair value of this bond will be 1079.85 way below what the market price is going to be because the market is factoring in an, an, a discount rate of seven percent Okay, so if I need to arrive at the price of this bond, I should discount it at 7%. Now, rarely would you see discrepancy like this. So invariably, your expectation will get paired with the market. Okay, will be in line with the market. So in that case, the rate at which you discount the cash flows of the bond would be the rate at which the market discounts the cash flows of the bond. And this discount rate in the context of bond I repeat, this discount rate in the context of bond would be known as yield or yield to maturity. Okay, so I shall indicate it to you while asking the valuation of the bond. I shall indicate the yield. So I would say, find the price of a 10% 5 year rupees 1000 bond, which is trading at an yield of or at, at an yield of 8% so which tells you that if I if you need to find out the market price of this bond you need to discount the cash flows at 8% and that gives you 1079.85 which is the market price so so you can call it at an yield off or sometimes they will say at a YTM off so yield to maturity or yield basically would mean one and the same that is the discount rate so fairly easy for us to remember what is the discount rate that needs to be applied while finding out the market price of the bond? It has to be the YTM and YTM invariably would be given to you more often directly and sometimes indirectly. Okay, let's take another example. Now out here you have a corporate bond which is getting traded in the market. Understand that a corporate bond will be a little more risky than a government bond because there's always a possibility of default on the part of the corporate. Of course, there could be few corporates which are as healthy as the government uh, are as capable as the government in terms of meeting their obligations. And in that case, their, 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 the quality of the bonds which are issued by those corporates would be perceived as good as the government bonds. But uh, let's say there is a corporate which is uh, not that credit worthy and hence there is some amount of risk fear on the part of the investors uh, with respect to default risk 
and that is something that would be factored in when an investor would look to buy such a bond. So let's say there is a corporate bond which is getting traded in the market and uh, it's a three year corporate bond. So it's a three year corp bond, corporate bond which is uh, being traded in the market. The face value of this bond is rupees 100. So with a face value of rupees 100 and uh, and a coupon of let's say 10 percent okay now uh, if i were to arrive at the price of this bond i need to have a sense of what should be the discount rate now with, uh, with, with respect to the discount rate, the problem indirectly indicates what it ought to be. They tell you that the three year, that the risk free rate is 4% and uh, is 5% and the appropriate risk premium for this bond the risk free rate is 5% and the appropriate risk premium the appropriate risk premium for this bond is 4% so let's understand this so what does it mean basically a comparable three year bond had it been a government bond it would have traded at an yield of five percent it would have traded at a ytm of five percent but this bond would trade at a ytm of nine percent how do i get this so the risky yield or the ytm on a risky bond will be equal to the risk free rate plus the risk premium so the appropriate discount rate which will be extended to the cash flows of this bond is going to be 5% plus 4% which is 9%. Okay, so that's the rate that we are going to use. So let's uh, get started with the steps. Step 1, set up the cash flows, 10% annual coupon. So in the first year you get 10 rupees, in the second year you get 10. In the third year you get 10 plus 100 which is your face value given the maturity of the bond being three years next i need to find out the present value that means i need to discount it so this gets discounted by nine percent 1.09 divided by 1.09 square 110 divided by 1.09 cube so add this and you shall have the value of this bond this would be 9.17 get the maths of it 8.42 84.94 add it up and we get a total price of 102.53 so that's interesting <clears throat> the bond trades at a price of uh, 102.53 which is a little higher than the face value of the bond which is rupees 100 and uh, that's worth understanding uh, why would this bond trade at a price which is slightly higher than the face value the reason is not very difficult to understand what is the return that the investors are seeking from this bond nine percent what is the kind of coupon that this bond is giving ten percent the coupon that the bond gives is more than the return that is being sought by the investor correct i repeat the coupon that the bond is giving is more than the yield, the return that is being sought by the investor. And hence, an investor doesn't mind paying a price which is slightly higher than the face value, which is slightly higher than the face value. I think it would be worth uh, 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 working out the same problem when you take the YTM not as 9%, but you take it as 10%. You will see that you get the value of this bond to be rupees 100. So when you discount all the cash flows at 10%, you get the price of the bond to be rupees 100. Which means that if the investor is seeking a return of 10% and the bond happens to give an annual coupon of 10%, the investor would be just happy 
to pay what is equal to the face value of this bond. Again, for the same reason, if an investor is seeking a return of 11%, don't be surprised if you get a price which is lower than 100. It would be somewhere around 97, 98. Kind, kind, uh, kindly work it out and you will see that you get a price which will be somewhere between 97 and 98 when the YTM is 11%. Again, the investor is seeking a return of 11%. The bond gives an annual coupon of 10% and hence uh, a bond investor would only be willing to pay a price for it which is going to be lower than the face value. Okay, so we will try to set it up uh, uh, as a nice table and I think uh, you can kindly register it on your notebook or at least try and remember it which is what I fondly call it the seesaw principle. <clears throat> so if the YTM is equal to coupon price is going to be equal to face value which means it will trade at par okay so you have the seesaw over here the pivot now if the YTM moves above the coupon so the coupon is fixed but the YTM can always vary so if the yield that the investors are seeking is more than the coupon price will go below the face value so the bond will trade at a discount okay and if the yield goes below the coupon that means an investor is 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 happy getting a return which is much less than the annual coupon or the coupon that the issuer is extending to the bond then uh, of course the price is going to be greater than the face value that means the bond will be trading at a premium in the market more than rupees 100 in our kind of an example right so this is something that you should keep in mind.